Um, can you talk to me a little bit about Suge's disdain for Harry O? Um, I know Suge had called him a rat and said he had done certain things snitch-wise. Can you speak to people that are unaware what Suge was talking about when he accused Harry O of being an informant? Yeah. All right, y'all. You know, actually, it's unfair to say that Suge had a disdain for Harry O initially because uh, Harry O was a facilitator from what I heard, wasn't around, but he didn't have any money. I heard Suge ask this question of of David Kenner on numerous, numerous occasions. David, I, I swear, he will always say, David, I thought you said none of that money was his. Because y'all know of the second time that Harry O got the default judgment against Shug. There was a settlement the first time. This happened in 1995, 1996, where Harry O and Interscope and, and, and Death Row settled. Harry O got 300 some thousand dollars in 1996, I believe. And that case was dismissed at that time because he had sued. And, and so up until that time, Suge, I guess, acquiesced and was giving him his money back. But Suge has always believed that the money came from another person who your boy Keefe D liked to brag about. Not Keefe D, bitch ass, no. But from a person that he was his boy, that he worked for. And um, and so that's who Suge, to this day, would tell you, did give some money uh, um, to fund, you know, to help along with all the other monies that was really to help their lifestyle, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, whatever, whatever they did with the money. Uh, it came from that other person, not Harry O. So Suge didn't really start having a disagreement or dislike for Harry O until the second time when we heard that he was down there meeting with the federal grand jury, calling people like Rick James, Jewel, and all those people that was on that Welcome to Death Row that was hanging around him then video. They were in 1998, 1999, we know for a fact, Harry O was down there stationed at the, uh, the Metropolitan uh, Federal Building as a CI, for the government. That's why he calls him a rat. Because 1998, 1999, there was a federal grand jury with an FBI agent, uh, an ATF agent named John, and an FBI agent named Dan McMullen that were uh, investigating death row record for racketeering and all of this. And they were the handler of Michael Herio. And so that's where he get all of that rat information from and start calling him a rat because we knew that. Well, this is a fact. I mean, and so um, that's why he had a problem with Harry O. That's when the problem started. <clears throat> but even after that investigation was over, all they found and could prove was that Death Row failed to... Uh, file uh, federal taxes in a timely manner. And that's why she got a big judgment, Dr. Dre got a big judgment, and David Kenner got a big judgment against Gelfan, the accountant firm, Gelfan, for uh, failing to file their taxes, even though you're responsible, even though you hire people to do it. So that's why Gelfan gave us the judgment, gave them the judgment, or the, the settlement, but they still had obligations. And that's when uh, Shug came home and I had it all worked out with the U.S. attorney and everything. Had no lawsuits, everything confirmed. We had his father, Marion Ice Sr., around October of that year. Uh, when Shug came home in 2001, 
we had him go down because I didn't want to do it and we couldn't find nobody to do it. And she said, I'll get my dad to do it. To go down and plead on the behalf of the, the company and take a uh, Mr. Meany uh, filling to follow a taxes uh, fine or, or um, you know, sentence. And he took it as the agent of death row, the father. And so, uh, Mary and I senior. And so that's what happened. That's all that came out of what Herio was trying to do and get done. And then later on, 2004, 2005, Reggie's gone, David Kenner gone, people that used to could get the paperwork done for Suge Knight was no longer with him. And Herio filed again, and Lydia, his wife, and they brought up a claim and sued Interscope as well. Interscope goes in and says, hey. And this is all she had to do. That's all he had to do. But I always tell y'all, marketing genius, business idiot, right? I always tell y'all that. Interscope goes to court and says, hey, we already settled this, this suit. It's, all, it's over. X, Y, and Z. And Complaint dismissed, right? And so this is what happened. Um, and then, so we do that. Suge Knight don't go to court. And so the case, Interscope get dismissed. Suge Knight don't, don't send no attorney, don't go himself. All he had to do is, all the attorney had to do is stand up in court and say, what Interscope just said, Death Row said, and they would have got dismissed. But Suge, being stubborn and not too smart and having no advisors around, allowed the case to continue. Kept thumping his finger at the uh, judge and the court system, wouldn't respond, wouldn't anything. And the judge, as y'all see, here he brags about in this audio, Tells y'all what he gonna do because they not showing up to court. Gives Suge a $107 million judgment. Not because Herio and they believe what he did was right or anything, but because they were pissed that Suge Knight refused to turn over any documents and cooperate with the, the procedures of a lawsuit. Or did the discovery is what they is actually called, and the judge gave him a, a default judgment. Should I still haven't learned? He goes and try to make a deal with Harryo's wife, who was because Harryo was in prison, and make a deal with her to get the judgment dismissed. Had the worst, I tell y'all, the two worst. Attorneys in America, Sherry Bingham and Lamont Givens. She found them. One's a probation or parole officer uh, that deals with, anyway, two idiots. They go, Lamont Givens start flirting with Lydia. He gets up under Lydia, right? So he think, playing double agent, not knowing that Shug is kind of still controlling Lamont goes and do a settlement agreement with her for $1 million and think that was going to get it dismissed. So he gives her, got a settlement paper and everything, but he don't file the paperwork with the courts. Michael Herio finds out about it. You know what he do? <laughs> Smart man from prison. He files for divorce on Lydia and says, Hey, Lydia don't have no rights to file my half because in California, you 50-50 partners. Lydia don't have no right to follow my half. I still have own half of that judgment. And the courts agreed and she eventually had to file bankruptcy. That's what happened. That's why their flow is lost and why Herio beat 
shit looking cool.